Termites. It's night 27. We're almost done, too. Probably about five more, I'd say. What are you guys up to? Are you hiding from COVID? You should be. California. California. I heard that Disneyland is going to be a vaccination site, which would make it the first time I've ever really wanted to go to Disneyland. My friend Bob is going to try to get his mom over there. Uh, my parents still haven't hit the lottery in Florida. They haven't gotten their shots, so they're rabid. I'm rabid. My friend's over 70, Lewis. He's got an appointment to get one, but it's not for a little bit. So stay safe, termites. It's not that much longer to finish it, get to the finish line. Everything will be just fine. In the meantime, the book's getting really good. And look what I got in honor of what? The NHL is starting. Hockey is starting. They are not going in a bubble, which makes me think there's going to be a lot of uh, COVID running around and a lot of rabid hockey players till it works its way through, I guess. But in honor of that, what are we drinking? What did I bring back from Buffalo last time? Wayne Gretzky, number 99, Canadian whiskey. That's right. And then it says Canadian uh, after that because they write it in French too. Here's what Wayne says on the back <clears throat> of the bottle. I've often said the highest compliment one can pay me, you can pay me, is that I work hard every day. I don't think I could say that. Hard work has been at the heart of all my achievements. For me. And this whiskey is no exception. Artificially crafted and blended to achieve a clean, smooth, robust taste profile. The whiskey is then finished with red wine barrels from my estate winery. Well, isn't he fancy? The result is a unique, rich, taste, rich tasting experience. Pleasingly balanced, refined, and intriguing. Truly a great Canadian spirit. Love, Wayne. It doesn't say that, but he did sign it. Number 99, baby. There you go. All right. So now if you remember where we left off was that uh, Jack Benny, her son, had died. And she had gotten a premonition of this, a physical premonition. She got all crazy. And now uh, Doolittle's come back to take her home uh, from the road to the funeral, I guess. What happened? Was he alone? Where did he die? How did he die? At first, dude didn't answer. He just kept trying to comfort me. The more he did, the more hysterical I became. Finally, dude started piecing together what he knew about the events surrounding Jack's death and disappearance. He started by saying that Jack was crossing the Duck River on a ranch when he felt, that's pretty good, actually. When he fell from his horse and hit his head on a rock. How do you know I yelled like Jack, Like all my kids like to ride horses? He was an excellent horseman. He rode Bronx and bulls and rodeos. He raced and won. How could this have happened? That's what the coroner said, Doc. Do answered. He found a bump on his head. His scalp was torn. The fall on the rock knocked him out, and he drowned. I told Do to tell Jim to start the bus. I was going home to my son. We don't need no bus, Do said. The doctor had arranged a hospital plane because she was in the hospital because she, like, passed out, whatever happened back there, some sort of episode. Doctors put me in an ambulance, and me and Dude were driven to a tiny airport. They made me lay down and put my feet in the air off the floor. Doctor flew me all the way to Nashville and held my feet. I don't know why, and I don't care. I would have flown standing on my head if that's what I had to do to get back home. But even though I went back to Nashville, the doctors wouldn't let me go, and they wouldn't let me see Jack's body. But the doctor did say I could go to the funeral if I returned to the hospital as soon as the service was over. I decided to go to the funeral, but I don't remember one thing about it. I can't tell you who preached it. Who preached it? That's some evangelical right there. Well, they're Methodist, but whatever. I would never say that as a Catholic. Who preached it? I can't tell you who preached it. I can't tell you what songs were sung. I can't even tell you where it was held. Oh, wow. I was completely in a haze through Jack's entire service. I was out of it, that's in quote, simply because I was grieving so hard I didn't see or hear a thing that was happening to me. I do remember that someone dressed me in a light blue suit that I thought was white. I wondered why would anyone dress me in white for a funeral? Jack was buried and I didn't even ask where. For a solid year, I didn't ask to visit the grave. Finally, I asked and was told Jack was buried at the campground. I thought it was a foolish to bury him in a tourist spot. After Dude died, I moved Jack back to a family graveyard near Hurricane Mills. I wanted Jack to be near his daddy. 
Betty Sue was crazy, as crazy as me when Jack died. The two had been, them been so tight, you couldn't have slipped a piece of paper between them. They'd been through a lot together. Betty Sue if Jack, said if Jack had five dollars to his name, she knew half of hers was for the asking. And he was that way with almost everybody, but him and Betty Sue didn't always, but him and Betty Sue was always a team, being the old, oldest kids. After Jack, Jack died, she used to go to his grave, what rake away the leaves, she'd rant and rave at him for leaving her. What if he intended to? Let's see, yeah. No reason to yell at a dead man who didn't plan on it. Then one day, she was cleaning off his grain and found a little black plastic horse. She took it up to her house and wandered about it. Next time, she found a little toy Jeep, like the one that her daddy had. She took that back, too. It was like things that meant something to Jack were waiting for there each time she went. Now, she says, she doesn't cuss at him so much for dying, but she don't miss him any less. Jack had not lived an easy life. Do often act as if he didn't like him, and he wouldn't let me help Jack financially, but that's the way I do believe. Your kids got to make it mistakes and learn to live with them. Well, I agree with you on that. It seems crazy to me. Me and Dude was living in a mansion. Some of the kids was living in places I thought looked like shacks. Well, maybe them kids got to get off their ass and fix it. How about that? They're not children. They're not 12. They're old at this point. I call home. I'd call home and have Gloria and Lorene sneak him some cash. He'd say they'd have to make it on their own just like we did. I was angry at Dude for years about that and Dude knew it. After Jack's death, he had a lot of guilt about the way he treated Jack. He couldn't talk about it unless he got real drunk. I'm sure that was fun. Right before he throws the string beads, he's going to tell you a little something about oh, the children. He said he knew the river was way too high to cross the day Jack died. In his own way, I think Dude tried to kill his self after Jack, his self. They wrote his self, his self after Jack's death. Oh, he didn't pick no gun or take no pills, but he tried by working and running himself to death. He'd run as fast as he could for hours in the July heat out on our ranch, and there was, some t there was times when he said he wanted to die. I couldn't believe that Jack died the way the coroner said he did. Every time I brought up my theory that, about Jack hitting his head and drowning, I, every time anyone brought up the theory about Jack hitting his head and drowning, I argued. I knew something had been going around that ranch and I kept badgering a boot do about it. Finally, he said, shut up, woman. You'll get us all killed. What? What's really going on? I later learned there were some bad folks wanting to use some of our property to do something with, to do with drugs. What? Are we talking about a meth lab here? Huh? We talking about a cocoa house? A cocaine house? I never learned what they wanted, whether it was a hidden place to make drugs or a place or a place to land planes. Wow, we're gonna fly the coca in? Jesus, now they've turned it into narcos. <laughs> Except it'd be harcos, because it would be hillbilly narcos. So it'd be harcos, which I would totally watch. They was pure evil folks though, and I was found out about Jack. They was purely evil folks, though, and I found out Jack knew about them, knew what they wanted, and was scared of them. He, did, he even talked to Doolittle about it. Nobody knew exactly what to do because there were some threats involved. Okay, back the bus up. I have land in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. No one's contacted me about, well, I think there's some meth labs on the road to the, to the property. Um, but how, someone must have made contact. Who? Was it Doolittle? Hmm? I don't think so. Was it one of the children? I do think so. Was it the other boy? He'd be too young, I believe. I think Jack maybe had a thing going on here. He got himself in a little too deep, and then he had to rat himself out to daddy. What I believe is this. Them folks killed my boy. He wouldn't have nothing to do with their idea. Well, why would they approach you? Out of nowhere, narcos with planes just come knocking on your door because you have a lot of space. Well, all kinds of people in Missouri, Kentucky, Arkansas, there's tons of room. I've never been contacted. I don't know for sure who they was, and they better hope I never find out. And they must have dropped their plans because me or do never heard no more about it. In all honesty, some of my kids think I'm nutty to believe this. That ain't so that it ain't so, but I know what I heard. 
Jack's death was the greatest tragedy of my life up to that point. Uh-oh. Losing a child is something so terrible that words can't, can't, C-A-I-N-T, apostrophe T, can't, can't be used to describe it. I learned something from it, though. God doesn't give a mother her children. He loans them to her. They're his, and he'll call them home when he decides it's time. That's right. 12 o'clock straight up. That's right. I do know that Jack Benny Lynn was a child of God and that he was saved. I know it because of something Jack once told me. Jack Place, our ranch, there was nothing more than a shack. He called it a cabin, but it was a shack, Jack's place on our ranch. It was a shack. The roof leaked. The place was falling down. Well, now, how about Jack? Fix it. Ugh. Lowe's is open, and it was open then. Oh, my God. After Jack got out of the army, he never did quite find himself because his wife had left him. He helped at the ranch, but he was always broke. Just thinking about it makes me mad all over again. Well, the money wouldn't have fixed all this, so don't feel bad. The money ain't the answer here. Mad at dude for not helping Jack when he needed money. Mad at myself for not insisting on it. Nine months before Jack died, he came to me and said he was going to stop drinking once and for all. Here we go. I have to admit that I questioned the sudden, the sudden decision, even though I applauded it. Jack, I said, don't say it if you don't really mean it. I agree with her there. Don't be throwing that shit out if you ain't going to come through and do it. But he did mean it, and he went on to tell me something that had happened to him. He said that a man showed up at the cabin recently. Who are these people that just walk on the property? It's strange. That doesn't happen normally. Maybe because she's famous? I don't know. He said that a man showed up at the cabin recently and introduced himself as a preacher. He said he was supposed to become the pastor at a little church house somewhere around here. Well, no, I tell this guy to get lost. What? What? He described the church house and asked if Jack knew its location. Sure I do. I'll take you there. Won't you come in? Oh, I get it. There was a church, not his. He didn't mean his house. Okay, but still strange. Sure, this is like in the 80s. I'll take you there. Won't you come in for some coffee first? The preacher went inside with my son. They had some coffee, made some small talk. Then out of the blue, the minister asked Jack if he would like to pray. I don't know how to pray, Jack admitted. I do, the preacher said. You repeat after me and if you mean what I say. Preacher prayed and, Lord at, and asked the Lord to forgive him of sins and to come to his heart forever. When the preacher told Jack to pray, he did. The preacher said he never heard anyone say a prayer so well. <sighs> the words just flowed from Jack's mouth. From that day on, my Jack Benny was a sober and changed man. He was converted. Strange, ain't it? Preacher had been lost in a physical sense here on earth. Jack had felt like he was lost in a spiritual sense. Jack could lead the preacher to the road to find his church, and the preacher could lead Jack right to the right road to find God. The Lord does work in mysterious ways. I guess you don't want a lot of security if you want the Lord working in mysterious ways because the Lord is just sending people all over the property. Took every bit of my own strength and my mommy's too to get him out of bed every day, to get me out of bed every day. I lost my will to do much of anything except just what was required to keep my family afloat financially. After Jack's death in 1984 and for the next decade, I could hardly bring myself to face my own career. I had tours already booked and couldn't get out of that, but I barely recorded a lick. Now we're on to chapter 23, termites. The hardest battle of all. Oh, Lord. Page 183 for those of you page nerds. Whether you want to or not, life rolls right on after tragedy. I couldn't imagine being able to sing to entertain anyone with the dark, heavy cloud that followed me around after Jack's death. A lot of them shows must have gone on automatic pilot because I don't remember much about them. But I had bookings and financial commitments, so me and the band went right on with our personal appearances, including extended engagements and one-night shows throughout the 80s. I've always been able to get bookings no matter what was going on with my records, and I'm sure thankful for that because between 84 and 2000, I only had five songs hit the charts. Like I said, my heart wasn't into making records. Plus, once MCA decided I couldn't have Owen Bradley as my producer, everything changed. I did most of the MCA. I did as most of the MCA artists stayed on the label with its new producer, President Jimmy Bowen. I don't know nobody else's experience about nobody else's experience with Bowen, but he never showed up much while we was recording. He was there for the first one. That's about it. I will say this, Jimmy Bowen was a recording genius. He just wasn't Owen Bradley. There you go. I made three albums for MCA after I left Owen. 
The last one in 1988, Who Was That Stranger? That's the name of it. After that, I left MCA and never looked back. I love being on DECA with Owen, but all them mergers and whatnot was behind the big companies getting so big, the family feel of it was gone. 1988, I was inducted to Country Music Hall of Fame. Back then, CMA didn't announce the inductee ahead of time like they do now, so it came as a surprise to me. I was sitting in the audience with Minnie Pearl, and they said they was going to announce the new people in the hall. Minnie leaned over and said, you're going to get this one tonight. Oh, baloney, I said. For one thing, there was folks like Farron Young and the Wilburn Brothers who wasn't in yet. Why would I go ahead of them? Willie put it best a few years later when he suggested they induct a bunch at one time to catch up. That's what they've done this year, this very year. Minnie grinned real big when Johnny Cash came out and started talking about a coal miner's daughter. I knew it had to be it. I had to be me. Yeah, that'd be weird if they came out and started talking about your whole biography and then gave it to somebody else. Wasn't that a great movie? Moving on, here's an award for Farron, whoever, Young. After he finished talking, I run up on the stage and jump right into Johnny Cash's arm. Ain't that funny? I used to sit on, De I refused to sit on Dean Martin's lap, but I'd hop into Johnny Cash's arms. Maybe it's because he was like family. One time back in the early days, I picked up Billboard magazine in Wilburn's office and saw a full page picture of Johnny and me. When was that picture took, I asked. That ain't you, said one of the Wilburns. That's June. I didn't believe it until I saw the woman wearing a dress I'd never seen before. And when I first come to Nashville, the Carter family thought I would join up with them because I looked so much like June. I turned them down because I knew I couldn't harmonize the way they wanted with nobody but myself. As usual, Ju Doolittle refused to show up at the awards that I was inducted into the Hall of Fame. What a jackass. Like, why can't you just go every once in a while and support the lady? I mean, it's a big deal. <sighs> probably be drunk anyway. That's probably what Loretta thought, too. Fuck it. Well, she wouldn't say fuck it, I don't think, but I would. <laughs> He's probably going to be drunk and throw string beans at people. Who needs it? I truly believe he got... I, tr I truly believe that he got to where he knowed he'd get drunk and didn't want nobody from the music business seeing him. Oh, okay, take one for the team. You know you're going to get drunk? Please don't show up. I don't think that I was all that mad at him for it by that time. It was just another little hurt. Even if I was, I didn't have long to stay mad because the following year, everything changed. Oh, no, I think we should probably end right there, termites, to see what really... What's the worst year of her life as if we already haven't had some troubling times, some very troubling times. Okay, what else, termites? Mm, it's freezing. It's going to be freezing for about another six weeks, I believe. I'm tempted to get in the car and drive on down to the panhandle, play golf or something. But I don't know about all that. I want to go back to that Kentucky gas station where the lady said they didn't have corona and she didn't mean the beer. She meant the virus. Ever, she said. I said, really? It got to the whole world except Kentucky? That's amazing. I should move to Kentucky. All right, termites. Is it cold where you're at? I know it's been chilly out even out in California, according to my California friends. So pull up your sheets. Get cozy. You're a good termite. Your worthy termites. <sighs> Probably get some more termite shirts for the, for the uh, spring. Wouldn't that be fun? I haven't really started on that, but I will if you guys want them. And um, that's it. You ready? Night-night termites. <laughs>